Well, hi everyone, I'm Chase Raz, and this is TZO. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the Zillica blockchain and of course looking at the recent mainnet upgrade to version 8.1.0, but specifically we'll be doing an analysis of the failure of the upgrade to catch, right? What led to the downtime after the upgrade, even though the upgrade had initially looked successful. So to begin understanding this to some degree, we should travel back in time a little bit, and we knew that an upgrade was coming on the 30th of August. Now, this upgrade was designed, or update rather, was designed to have quite a few special features. You can see memory cleanup and API uh, networks, uh, updating the API for network stability, excuse me. But also, we were all very excited as Zillikens to see this update because it contains the necessary components to get Zillica working with the Poly Network Bridge, what we've all been calling the Zill Bridge, and before that, the ETH Bridge. So the update seemed to have gone off without a hitch. In fact, a tweet from Zillica directly before, um, or right about the time that the update was supposed to end, indicated that the update ended slightly early, about 15 minutes early, and we all know that means it ended even earlier internally before it was communicated. But a couple of hours later, we got yet another update saying that some things have been noticed that require fixes and mainnet was temporarily paused, or rather the transactions on mainnet were temporarily paused. Now this was particularly concerning for a lot of us because it seems like the past three, four, five updates that have happened have all had these problems, have all had some type of unexpected downtime after the update that's followed. And this particular downtime became a concern because, you know, we, it went from a few hours to 12 hours to I think we got up to something like 16, 17, 18 hours before the, um, the mainnet was finally restored. So during that time when we didn't really know what was going on, I had made a tweet that I was, I was trying to shout out to some of my Microsoft friends and say hi by using a picture of Cortana, but I was making this futuristic post about artificial intelligence. And I had no idea, the reason I'm bringing this up is I had no idea how accurate my complete BS, if you will, was going to be in terms of what the problem actually was. Of course, there's no AI, right? We're not talking about the futurism parts, but I basically said, hey, you know what? In the future, we'll say that uh, the AI forgot it was being taken offline, and it's a little groggy waking up, right? That's the essence of the joke I had been making. But again, it turned out to be somewhat accurate. So let's take a look at what really did go on. About 18 hours after the mainnet went down, it was brought back up. And here's the post-mortem report that was provided from Zillica by Amrit, CEO himself, on Telegram. Now, I'm going to break this down for you because I don't expect you to squint and read all of this on screen. I don't expect that you've read all of this in the past. That's what I'm here for to help make this a little bit more palatable and understandable for those of us who aren't developers, maybe, or are, you know, into blockchain for investing purposes, or maybe you're just a business person like me and really want to know what happened behind the scenes. So, Here's what we know. The update had a bunch of cool things in it. That's what I'm circling in blue right now. And the blue is to remind me not to go into deep detail about what these are. I want to talk about a Merkle tree right now, otherwise known as a hash tree. I want to talk about the API. I want to talk about these things, but that's not our purpose right now, right? Let's just go ahead and label this an update, right? However, uh, a little bit later, hats from the duck community ducks for the win here, had noticed that something interesting had happened, that before the update and after the update, an NFT, or an NFD as they call them, non-fungible ducks, had been minted with the same ID. Now, this would be equivalent to a database giving you a duplicate unique key, right? Just something that shouldn't happen, doesn't happen under normal operating, or any, any type of operating condition if things are working properly. So of course, Zillica wanted to look into it and they checked the Zill Ducks, the, the Ducks um, smart contract first and two thumbs up. Ducks were working fine. This did seem to be something uh, related to the update itself. Now, in the time that it took uh, anyone to notice something was wrong and for Zillica to review it 
and to pause transactions, there were 4,478 transactions that were made on the upgraded uh, blockchain. Now, first of all, I'm really happy about that. We're talking about a couple of hours here. Sending through. Some of these were minor rewards, some of these were smart contract engagements. Some of these were wallet to wallet transfers, but that's a pretty healthy number for just restoring an upgraded uh, mainnet. But we'll come back to those transactions in just a moment. What I'm going to circle down here now is the fact that what was observed, what the problem really was, was that the mainnet was brought down at transaction or excuse me, at block number, not transaction number, at block number 1,394,088. Don't commit that uh, number to memory. Just remember it ends in 88. However, when the blockchain was brought back online, when Zilliqa came back at block 1,394,089, the global state was different. What does this mean? Well, first of all, um, <laughs> I should say absolute thanks to Melvin at Zillstream and thanks to Gary at the Gary Token for over two days, helping me make sense of the technical details behind the scenes. I'm a business guy, and I rely on you developers out there to help me understand and convert this in the business-friendly language. So thank you, Melvin. Thank you, Gary. The essence of what happened here was that the way Zilliqa works with its sharding is that every 100 blocks, the different nodes on Zilliqa get together and they perform what I'm going to call a handshake. They've given me the technical terms for what all of this is. I'm not going to call it that. I'm going to call it a handshake. And so the different nodes get together, they handshake, and they exchange information. And they bring it all together to build the global state for Zilliqa. Now, I know you've experienced this before if you're like me and have a decent number of transactions on the Zillica blockchain. If you've ever had that smart contract or that transaction where you're sitting there and counting and 20 seconds go by, 30 seconds go by, a minute goes by, two minutes go by, and it always seems to be around the five minute mark that the transaction takes to process, you're not alone because every 100 transactions, that's exactly what happens. It takes approximately five minutes for all of the nodes to get together, switch who's going to be the leader node for the next 100 blocks, and exchange information. Now, because the blockchain was paused, remember that number 88 that I said remember at the end of the 1 million whatever? Because the blockchain was paused with a number ending in 88 and not between the 99 to 100 split when the handshake takes place, Zillica woke up proverbial language here, referencing back to my AI tweet, Zillica woke up and forgot that the prior 88 transactions, or 88 blocks worth of transactions had even happened. So if a token ID had been created, if any type of anything that would be equivalent to a database unique key had been created, Zillica essentially forgot about it and would be reissuing that number. Now, I am shortening that and making it somewhat brief for the sake of understanding because that problem branches out in a number of ways other than just number problems, numerical problems. For instance, imagine putting funds into a liquidity pool on ZillSwap and everything going through, but ZillSwap having no record of you having any share of that liquidity pool. Right, that's just one example of how these um, how these numbering issues can manifest on a blockchain such as Zilliqa. Now, let's take a look at what happened after that was identified. Well, first of all, I do want to put this in to Zilliqa's credit. They awarded the Zilduck community a thirty thousand U.S. dollar payable in Zill, a thirty thousand dollar reward for identifying and first reporting the problem. That's, I mean, that should give you some indication about how big this problem is and how bad it could have been if someone hadn't reported it quickly. So for those of us who are not developers, we're business people, we're investors, we're just casual tech, uh, you know, enthusiasts, what does all of this mean and what has, it, what has happened? Well, Zillica had put forward a three-step process for how they were going to deal with this. That's what we're seeing on the left-hand side of the screen right now. Step one was to roll back the network to block 1,394,088. This would restore, essentially, and create this, this state where the nodes and the global state and everything else was working as it was before mainnet was brought down 
for an update. Step two would then be to reconstruct the global state at that block number. Essentially saying, let's go ahead and wrap this up, do the handshake, make sure everybody's in agreement and consensus about the state of the network, the transactions that have happened, and so on. Step three would then be to replay as many of the 4,478 transactions as possible. Remember, these are the transactions that happened after mainnet came back online, but were out of sync with this global state. One of the concerns here is that a decent majority of these transactions will probably go through and probably have already now gone through just fine. However, some won't. Remember, the blockchain forgot about 88 blocks. So if somebody had adjusted, you know, the liquidity um, and you made a transaction on ZillSwamp and your, you know, your slippage had been sufficient, but now it's not or some type of situation like this, it is possible that those 88 blocks that had been omitted would in a material way impact the transactions that were made after the blockchain was brought back online. So what is Zillica doing to rectify this problem? Well, on the right hand side, you'll see that they're one compensating users. The transactions that fail, these uh, of the 4,000 some odd, of the transactions that fail when they're rerun, Zillica's looking into them line by line, item by item, looking at what potential compensation may be necessary to make things right. Now, because this is a business channel, I do want to wrap up this explanation with a couple of points of what we take forward and also what we can associate this problem with and what we cannot associate it with. So let me just dig in first of all with what we know. This concern, this outage, which lasted the better part of a day, was a purely technical oversight. Stopping the block, uh, the blockchain in the middle of this hundred blockchain count. That really leads to something that Zillica has addressed in the past that developers have been adamant about Zillica correcting, that the community has been adamant about wanting to see improved in order to better solidify investment, our investment, and that is improving the QA process on Zillica. But to date, that hasn't really happened, at least nothing publicly that I'm aware of. Some of the concerns here have been that Testnet is out of date. I remember one of my very first experiences with Zillica was somebody directly telling me, don't bother doing this on testnet because the way it's done on mainnet is different, right? You cannot execute the same script on one as the other and get the same result. That was a major red flag in the early days for me in terms of Zillica and its QA. But I thought, you know what? Crypto's new. Um, things are just kind of like that everywhere. And in fairness, they are. In fairness, they are. But I want to speak to that point for a moment because it's a losing proposition. When we talk about sharding, Sharding is nothing new. It's new to blockchains. Just like databases are nothing new. They were created in 1970. The Merkle tree that developers are so happy to have, that's a 1979 invention. A lot of these things come from that golden Unix era of the 1970s. It's reapplying them in new ways around this new technology of a distributed ledger. That's what's materially different these days. So to, from a business point of view, to an, accept an argument that testnet and mainnet just, that, you know, they just operate differently. It's really a non-starter. There are some solutions that people have proposed in the past that I hope Zilla could take seriously. One is creating a simulation environment in addition to correcting the testnet issues, which again, in fairness, Zilliqa has said they are or will, or at some point in the future, this testnet issue will be visited. But the simulation environment is essentially taking and doing exactly what it sounds like. Running a simulation of a current or future bit of code, that core code, so maybe taking an update, and then throwing real-world transactions at it in the simulation to see what would happen with the code. We can simulate nodes, we can simulate... I mean, simulations are very advanced these days. So that's something I would like to see explored as well. But also, I think one of the leading keys is, and, and I know that Amrit, as CEO of Zillica, has spoken to this directly as a long-term goal for the network. I really want to see this happen and be prioritized at this point because of the number of times that updates, major and minor, are then met with complete downtimes. I'd love to see the parallel upgrade cycle implemented. This is where the network continues to operate during an upgrade. In parallel, the upgraded network, the updated network, runs side by side. 
new transactions are logged on both. And ultimately, just like a relay race around a track, the baton, so to speak, is handed over from, from one racer to another. The former racer falls off. The new one, the update, continues going. I know that's a, a long-term focus of Zillica, but frankly, right now, with what we've seen of the blockchain time and time again having this issue, is that QA really needs to be a priority. Not NFTs. Um, you know, to a degree, I would say the bridge shouldn't have even been a priority before this happened, but here we are, and, and I'm happy to have the bridge coming soon. I, I, I wouldn't say pause it in order to do this, but anything you had planned after the bridge, Zillica, whether it's NFTs, new new chain integration, something, I really would highly suggest prioritizing this and maybe not making this the sole focus, but it has to run as the, it, it has to be the A plot, not the B plot. I, I understand that there's a lot of pressure for the website. There's a lot of pressure for this, that, and the other. This is what solidifies our investment, at least if you're like me and coming from the business side. Now, what can we take away what are we confirming here by knowing all of this about the outage now? Does this confirm the win marketing concerns that Zillica has a fundamental problem with Mark? This has nothing to do with that. So let's go ahead and cross that one off. Does this give us any indication or confirmation that there's a lack of leadership at Zillica, which is something we hear as criticism of that network frequently on social channels? I would have to say no. And the reason I say no is because they really, Zillica really got out in front of this. Now, I do admit and I agree that some people are a little bit concerned that during that 16, 18, whatever it is, our uh, block of time where the network was unexpectedly unavailable, there really weren't the type of hourly you know, updates that you would expect that most live services would issue. Typically, you'll issue a couple hourly then you'll give the update and say, because of the problem is going to take longer, we're going to stop and go, you know, at a four hour cycle or something like that. That didn't happen. But short of that one oversight, the communication was there. They acknowledged they had a problem. There were folks on social media triaging the problem. Developers were working behind the scenes. A postmortem was issued. Explanations of the postmortem were offered in social media channels. Uh, I think we can rule that out. Now, I know there are a lot of calls to get together and have a call to do some type of video like this with, with Amrit, with the team, with the community. And I think some other YouTube channels are pursuing that. Frankly, I don't think it's time for that right now. I think that uh, as community members, investors, business people, developers, we should be taking the information that's shared here, uh, understanding it and processing it and working it into our strategies. Zillica, meanwhile, needs to be taking a look from their vantage point of how it happened. They, of course, have tons of information that I don't have. They should look from their vantage point, release some more information later over time, and then, once both of those two halves, if you will, have been able to process, then we come together. But speaking of two halves, I will say that there have been some statements about uh, or concerns about Zill's organizational structure, and I don't disagree but I don't know if this directly is confirmed by the events that seem to continually happen every time there's an update. I think it's close. I do think it's related. Now, if you're not familiar with this particular criticism, it's that Zillica itself, uh, almost to the point to where I would argue that it's openly stated this way, it's very, or at least it's openly acknowledged, Zillica is divided into two halves. There are the developers and there are the marketers. Now, I think, uh, you know, a business person like myself, especially a marketer, I have some concerns about that. You shouldn't have just two silos. <laughs> there shouldn't be two halves. And if you do have only two silos, I do have a bit of a concern about it being, um, you know, development and marketing. That just, it's, right, there, there are some fundamental concerns I have about that. I would love to see a more executive top-level structure that is neither, neither of those silos that works between them and facilitates uh, interaction. But again, there are indirect connections here, and I really do think this is what it stems back to, but we need the, the, the root cause analysis right now. This is the high level that's causing this and other issues, not really what we need to be focused on in the short term for making sure it doesn't happen next time. What we do need to focus on is the workflow. Like I mentioned, especially with QA quality assurance, this has been a weak spot for the Zillica blockchain for literally as long as I've been in the crypto space. 
So I think working that out is going to be one of the key pieces that reassures, right? They talk, uh, Zelica likes to talk about keeping our funds safe. I think that's going to be the key in doing that and propping up our investment and propping up the usability of the network and propping up the stability and the, the, the operating uptime. All of those things are super important going forward. So I do hope that internally they're taking a look at the workflow and finding, I think, what is very glaringly obvious to everybody at this point, investor, business person, developer, that the QA process is really most likely the culprit here. All right, everybody, I'm Chase Raz. This is TZO, and now you know what happened. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you know anything that I don't, put them in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Take care, everyone.